Başladım. Hello everyone. Uh, in this week of Biospin Journal Club, uh, I want to talk about string faces uh, observed in artificial spin ices. Uh, in my presentation, firstly, I want to give you uh, some brief information about uh, basic concepts, state of the art. Then I want to go back into this uh, article. So let's start with uh, square ice concept. Uh, artificial spin ice concepts uh, are built on this concept, so uh, it is important to mention first uh, in this concept. Uh, square ice concepts uh, have water molecules, and a water molecule have one oxygen and two hydrogen. And if you put these oxygen atoms in a lattice points like this, uh, you can replace hydrogen atoms between oxygen atoms. And one hydrogen have to bond uh, one oxygen. Uh, this one or this one. If a hydrogen is bonded to one oxygen, we can represent it with spin. Uh, this spin, this hydrogen is bonded to oxygen, so we can represent the spin uh, looking to oxygen. And we can fill all of the space with this spin configurations. And uh, one oxygen can have only two hydrogen bonded. So there is the rule uh, emerging here. It is the two in, two out rule. This is uh, ice rule called in this concept. So if you check all of these oxygen atoms, they have only two hydrogen. Because of that, uh, two spin must look into uh, this point and two spin must look uh, outside. So this is two in, two out rule. Uh, in this spin configurations, there are uh, 16 possible uh, configurations. Uh, two in, two out, three in, one out, three out, one in, four in, and four out. However, because of this ice rule, only uh, six of them is possible, two in and two out. And two of these six uh, configuration is unpolarized. Uh, if you sum all of these spins, they are giving zero magnetization. However, uh, in this four configuration, there is a polarization here. If you sum all of this spin, it gives a total uh, magnetization. And this is more energetic compared to this one. This is, we can say this is ground state. This is uh, more energetic or excited state, we can say. And uh, in artificial spin ice, we can build these uh, spin configurations by using nanomagnets. This is the square lattice uh, created by nanomagnets. And there is a gap between magnets and there are horizontal and vertical uh, bar magnets uh, placed uh, in the lattice. And uh, uh, compared to square eyes in artificial spin eyes, all of these uh, 16 states, 16 configurations becomes possible. And you can observe some exotic behaviors in the system like uh, type three you called here, uh, they are called monopoles. You can create monopoles in the lattice and you can move it, you can trace their, uh, you, can, you can follow their traces by uh, following the motions. So this is uh, a bit more interesting than square eyes. And uh, these, structures called geometrically frustrated systems because if you think uh, a square lattice and if you take spin configurations and if you say this interaction between these two spin is ferromagnetic and this is ferromagnetic ferromagnetic and this is antiferromagnetic so what will be the spin configuration of this point so if this is ferromagnetic interaction between these two spins, this wants to hold the spin uh, to upside. And 
if this is antiferromagnetic between these two uh, spins, uh, this interaction wants to hold the spin downside. So what will be the result? We don't know. So this is called geometrically frustrated system. So there is a residual energy in the system. Again, the same, uh, the similar story here. If you take a triangular uh, lattice and if you put spins and if you let uh, antiferromagnetic interaction between them, so what will be the orientation uh, of this uh, spin? So this is called geometrical frustrated systems and we can uh, create these interactions in artificial spin ices and they are, uh, this energy can fluctuate all of the lattice. So it's it, it just give an interesting result and you can investigate systems uh, by fluctuating these energies. And in the literature, uh, you can observe very large uh, scales uh, in artificial spin ice geometries. You can see several uh, designs. This is basic square ice uh, lattice. This is square uh, spin ice lattice. And if you elevate one of the uh, nanomagnets, I mean, if you make it thicker than uh, compared to other one, uh, it is called offset square. And if you combine with uh, disks, this nanobars, it is called uh, square with XY modifiers. And if you take several uh, bar magnets from the square lattice, you can fabricate different type of uh, lattices like Tetris, Shakti, brickwork. And you can add uh, some bar magnets and it is toroidal and you can add uh, three things here. And you can rotate this square uh, and you can obtain chiral eyes by rotating these things. And you can add again uh, bar magnets uh, to obtain quadrupole and trident. And there is another important lattice structure here called Kagom. And you can play with this Kagom structure by adding or removing some lattice points. And you can also fabricate these uh, lattices by using disks. You can create uh, square lattice, triangular lattice, kagam lattice, and honeycomb lattice. By using these uh, things, you can also create quest crystals like this, uh, very different patterns. Also in atomic scale, uh, there are some 3D structures, uh, nanowire structures, or you can also check in literature there are some atomic uh, crystal structures obeying this ice rule. So these are uh, different types of uh, artificial spin ice geometries. And nowadays, there are some key directions for future research. Uh, as I told, there are some emergent behaviors like quasi particles, phase transitions, spin waves, or collective modes and uh, some methods are in now uh, now they are looking for some methods to characterize or fabricate this uh, artificial spin ices also there are some geometries under investigation and new materials and dynamic modes such as uh, thermal relaxation and driven processes uh, such as if you apply um, magnetic field or something like this, uh, you can observe some dynamic modes in the system. And by using these things, now they are looking for uh, some function. What can we do with this artificial spin ice? We can do some computation, we can do data storage device, hybrid systems. Uh, also, we can analyze some magnetics, uh, like uh, in information transportation, uh, you can do with magnetics. Also, you can work with uh, encryption. So these are some key directions for uh, future research uh, topic uh, for artificial spin ices. So let's go back into uh, article, uh, string faces observed uh, in artificial spin ice. In this paper, uh, they worked with Santa Fe ice structure Santa Fe ice structure uh, 
created from some brick-like structures. There are two bricks inner side, and then there are six bricks uh, around this. Uh, in the nearest neighbor, it is rotated. Uh, all of this square is rotated 90 degree, and all of this lattice is created like uh, this. And this is the ACM image, uh, fabricated sample from paper. And in the paper, they made some imaging uh, for magnetic behaviors. This is the MFM image, and this is the XMCD photoelectron uh, emission microscopy image. So in, from these images, uh, they can analyze the uh, spin configurations. So uh, here the energy definitions. If these two spins are parallel to each other, this is a parallel state. Uh, this is the lowest energy term. So this is in ground state. So we call it happy vertex. And if they are uh, anti-parallel, I mean, geometrically they are parallel, but spins are looking each other and here they are looking the same uh, position. Uh, so if uh, two spins are anti-parallel, so energy is not in ground state, so we call it unhappy vertex. It is uh, the same here. Uh, this is the ground state configuration, and this is the some energetic uh, configuration. So energy is uh, higher than the state. So these are called unhappy vertices. These are called happy vertices. In Santa Fe ice structure, uh, there are uh, possible spin configurations. Uh, so if you categorize them, we can say this is type one, this is type two, two. This two shows a uh, coordination number. This vertex has two spins. So type one is uh, happy, type two is uh, unhappy vertex. And if there is unhappy vertex, we can represent it with strings. Again here, type one, three, it has three coordination and type two, three, it has three coordination with unhappy vertices. And uh, type three, uh, ha if you, let's check this one. Uh, if you rotate this, if you switch this magnetic moment to other side, this uh, vertex becomes unhappy. If you rotate this one also, uh, this vertex and this side uh, becomes unhappy. So you can put a string like this. Here, type one, four uh, coordination, and this is the ground state. And if you rotate one of these spins uh, downside, uh, this side becomes happy and the cross uh, will be unhappy because of this uh, interactions here. And uh, again, a similar story here. These sides are happy and these sides are unhappy. So we can put a string like this. And this is four in uh, configuration. So all of the sides are unhappy. So we can put a cross string here. So these are the uh, vertex types and string representations for uh, Santa Fe ice uh, structure. So here are some examples. This structure stays in its ground state, so there is no unhappy vertex here. But uh, if you think there are two unhappy vertices here, so you can combine strings between them. Here there are four uh, unhappy vertices, so you can combine them like this. These are some examples of magnetic moment and string configurations. And there is a beautiful feature of this uh, Santa Fe ice geometry. Uh, let's think uh, this uh, green region. Let's take this here. As you can see, uh, all of the vertices around the uh, center are happy. But uh, in the center, vertices must be unhappy. It, the 
because the tree uh, structure, uh, tree coordination number uh, of this vertex uh, has lowest energy compared to two coordination numbers. So uh, these are uh, applying a force to be unhappy here. And if you check this uh, blue side, blue region, this here, they are all happy state. And again, the red region here, they are all staying uh, in happy state. So uh, if around configuration is in happy state, uh, so center vertex must be unhappy. So this structure forces some points to be unhappy. This is a feature of uh, Santa Fe ice geometry. And this is the uh, material and NFM images uh, from the paper. They used a 15 nanometer thick permalloy with uh, 220 uh, and 80 nanometer lateral dimension bar baguettes. And they made some uh, array. They changed lattice constants from uh, 300 nanometer to 40, 480 nanometer. Uh, before these measurements, they annealed sample at uh, 818 Kelvin for 15 minutes. Then they cooled down the system to room temperature, and this image is uh, taken after this story. And these are some moment configurations from the experiment, and these are some uh, small portions of the arrays. As you can see here, as the lattice constant increase, the string numbers and string lengths are increased. So uh, if you analyze this uh, with this uh, possible spin states, spin configurations, this is type one four, type one four is here. Uh, for the 300 nanometer uh, lattice constant, all of the four uh, uh, coordination, I mean, this vertex, uh, stays ground state in the experiment for 300 uh, nanometer lattice constant. Because of that, uh, type two, four, this is here, uh, there, there was no type two, four in the measurement. Uh, it says all of the uh, four vertices, uh, this structure stays in its ground state. They are happy. However, if you, uh, as you increase the lattice constant, uh, you can observe different configurations in the systems. So this is the summary of uh, some spin configurations as a function of lattice constant and vertex fraction. If you check this uh, type one three, type one three is here. Uh, for the lattice constant 300, it stays here 80. 80% uh, uh, of the spin configuration stays uh, their uh, happy state, and but 20% uh, of the spin configuration stays uh, in their uh, unhappy state. So they are building these strings. As you increase the lattice constants, uh, more strings emerging. Here is the analysis uh, of the string number of strings, string lengths as a function of a lattice constant. As you can see here, uh, as the lattice constant increased, string numbers and string lengths are increased. Uh, I'm not sure these colors are good or bad in the presentation, but uh, as the lattice constant increase, number of strings and string lengths are increasing. This is the same graph, uh, but, but represented in logarithmic scale. Uh, as you can see here, uh, as the lattice constant increased, number of strings and string lengths are increasing. These are the uh, string length and number of strings. And they have a logarithmically linear uh, behavior. As you increase lattice constant, uh, linearly, logarithmically, linearly, uh, they are increasing. In the second part of this uh, article, 
they made XMCD beam experiments. However, uh, they used here 2.5 nanometer thick permalloy and they uh, increased the bar dimensions and they increased lattice constants uh, to 600, 600 nanometers, 700 nanometer, and 800 nanometers. Uh, here they made two types of experiment. One is lattice constant, another is temperature. They called uh, in these temperatures, uh, the thermaloid films uh, is very close to Curie temperature. So they called this a dynamic uh, state. And as you can see here at the higher temperature, string numbers and string lengths are increasing. Also, as a function of lattice constant, uh, it is also increasing. And as a function of temperature and lattice constant, if you analyze average string lengths, uh, you can observe uh, here, as the lattice constant increased, uh, the average string length also increase, has an increasing trend. Uh, again, uh, here, the if you increase temperature, again, uh, average string lengths are uh, increasing in trend. Again, uh, a similar analysis here for different temperatures is you, if you increase temperature, uh, the number of strings and number of uh, string lengths uh, are increasing. Again, in here, uh, as a function of temperature, uh, number of strings and string lengths are uh, increasing. This is the same graph. The probability of finding a as seen for as seen for the high temperature annealing data discussed above. In other words, we expect that uh, probability is related to uh, exponential minus LK when the moments are thermalized, where K is the reciprocal of a characteristic length and depends on temperature. Following a Boltzmann distribution, this corresponds to the average energy per unit length of the string, phi, divided by temperature. Uh, it is say here, K is equal to phi divided by temperature. So uh, this is the inverse uh, of length, string length, and it depends on temperature. And you can represent this uh, distribution by Boltzmann distribution. So it has a linear uh, dependence uh, here with the, the one over the temperature. So uh, the very interesting result here, uh, you made very complex topologic system with uh, including spins and you define some string uh, in the system and you run the system with temperature or lattice constant, and you analyze these strings. And you can explain the uh, system state with uh, length of strings. So the results demonstrate that the spins of the topologically complex structure of scientific ice with its large unit cell can be robustly represented through the simple language of one dimensional strings and their Boltzmann statistics. So this is all I want to talk about this paper. And you can find uh, more articles, more studies from Cristiano Nisoli and Peter Schiffer. They are the main, they are mainly working on this artificial skin ices and they have lots of paper on this topic. You can find more and thanks for watching.